Yo, smart contracts are one of the most important pieces of the blockchain and DLT revolution. While Bitcoin is a layer one blockchain that has the perfect monetary policy, detaches money from the state and gives back power and control to the people. Ethereum then brought us smart contracts, which gives this a uh, possibility for us to build applications, decentralized applications on top of this base layer technology. Now it seems that we have a third wave of innovation, which in my opinion is interoperability, the ability to connect all these sovereign blockchains, right? So that in the future you can connect Bitcoin to Ethereum, to Cosmos, to Solana, to Polkadot. All these ecosystems will be interoperable. And within these ecosystems, you will have different versions of smart contract platforms. And in today's video, I wanna talk about one in specific that is the first mover in the Cosmos ecosystem, and that is Juno Network. Boom, so Juno is an entirely community-driven layer one smart contract platform within the Cosmos ecosystem, right? And the way Cosmos is architectured is that basically anybody can launch a new blockchain, um, set up a new validator set, and then through IBC, which is an interoperability standard, you can pack to all other coins and chains um, and networks within the broader Cosmos or IBC ecosystem, right? So this is the whole point of Cosmos in the first place. And then Juno plays a major role in that because it's the first mover to implement Cosm Wasm and become a smart contract platform. Juno offloads smart contract um, activity from the Cosmos hub, right? The Cosmos hub is a chain on which Atom is residing, but it is mostly there to become this most valuable um, a security source for the Cosmos ecosystem and also to provide interchange uh, services. Maybe I can do another video on that. But Juno is primarily there to offload smart contract activity um, so that the Cosmos hub does not become a smart contract platform, right? So Juno is a smart contract layer one. That means it implements Cosm Wasm and Cosm Wasm is a native smart contract platform that was um, initially um, uh, pioneered um, and invented by Ethan Frey who is um, now also um, the co-founder of Confio. So Confio is basically the company behind this, the software development company, core, most essential company probably within the Cosmos ecosystem, highly, highly underrated. And Cosmosm en enables you to write smart contracts in Rust, which according to Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, is um, the best uh, programming language out there. And then through IBC, the interoperability standard, which Cosmosm is obviously compatible with, you have um, this access to an entire internet of blockchains, right? So Juno is the first implementation of Cosm Wasm, right? Um, the Confio team did not launch their own smart contract platform. I think they could have and maybe even should have, but it was Juno that first did it. Um, and it's um, also cool because it's an entirely community driven project. So. The team behind Juno is basically core developers from other projects um, within the Cosmos ecosystem, right? Jack Zampolin is involved. You have Wolf Contract, who is also running the SG1 validators. You have Demi. So you have a lot of different um, developers, core developers that know Cosmos technology in and out. So let's look into some of the depths that are already within the ecosystem. You can find it here on the website. This thing basically just launched, but you can already see Juno Swap Dex is a native Dex that we can look into in a second. Juno Scan, which is a tool, also Juno Mint, Cosmverse. I think those are um, more NFT related things. Dow Dow that is launching Juno Drop. Neta that we can also look into in a second. Um, there's a couple of projects already um, in total 47 at this point that are being built on top of Juno, right? Um, and let's look first into Juno Swap Decks because that is an interesting one um, that is about to also launch incentives, right? So right now it's a very basic AMM or DEX, a decentralized exchange, right? Similar to what Osmosis is or similar to what Uniswap is. Um, you can swap, you can transfer assets, um, IBC in and out, right? Deposit them onto the Juno chain um, and you can provide liquidity, right? Um, so you can see all the pools here. Currently, there's no APRs simply because the raw token, which is a native governance token of the Juno swap decks, is not live yet, right? But it's coming very soon and it's also launching with a big airdrop 
for Juno holders and stickers and early LPs on the Juno swap decks. So that's why it always makes sense to play around with these projects, uh, with these products early on. The raw token is going to be the incentive. And I also see similar uh, thing that's similar to what we see on Osmosis. There might be external incentives through the Juno governance or through the Juno swap decks governance. Could be, for example, that let's say you're in the Juno XPRT pool, that by providing liquidity for Juno XPRT, that you would earn raw incentives, maybe even Juno incentives, and maybe even XPRT incentives, right? If all three communities agree, and if somebody puts up a proposal, right? Um, so this is the beauty of DeFi. This is the beauty of being early in a DEX. Juno swap, really a cool thing to keep an eye on. Um, you can conduct trades. The swap fee is 0.3%, same to osmosis. You can set your slippage here. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, highly recommended to play around with JunoSwap. Another project within the Juno ecosystems I want to point out is Neta, Neta.money. They just had a gov drop, a governance drop, where um, you were airdropped Neta tokens if you participated in Juno governance, right? Um, um, so yeah, uh, you could claim them starting February 1st, 2022. So far, um, 31,711 have been claimed which is means that only 1,238 NETA will be burned. So that's probably like 99% already that have been claimed. NETA, I don't know too much about it. It's a decentralized store of value. Ultra scarce could become something like ION, um, even though ION on the Osmosis ecosystem is pivoting more towards becoming um, the base assets to mint um, synthetic assets on top of, but that's maybe a different video. Um, NETA, however, has this scarcity. There's only at the current point, 31,711 tokens around, right? Now, if we look at some of the statistics here on chain data on the uh, Juno token, then you can look here at the bro and bro um, uh, dashboard, um, which I highly recommend. Um, and yeah, you can see um, currently here the Neta stats because Neta is basically a smart contract built on top of Juno. And you can see the Juno stats. So Juno currently at $28.56 has a market cap of $1.17 billion and staking APR of nearly 110%, fixed inflation of 40%. And you can also see the ratios of how many coins are, or how many tokens are bonded, how many are circulating, how, how much is the current supply and what is the max supply, right? So max supply is 186 million tokens that will be achieved after 12 years, right? So the um, inflation rate is decreasing every year um, at a, starting at a fixed inflation of 40% in the first year, then it drops to 20%, then it goes to 10%, and then it gradually goes towards zero over a period of 12 years, right? So Juno gets more scarce, and the more utility is being built around it, the more um, the price has potential to go up, right? Because there will be organic um, buy pressure um, as Juno is a native fuel of um, everything that is being built on Juno, right? Um, all smart contracts. Um, and all it takes is a couple of big, big dApps that really take off, gain um, strong adoption and have product market fit. So Juno tokenomics are very, very thoughtful and really cool in favor of the community, right? Um, they started with a 47% of the supply um, stake drop to um, Atom stakers and holders. Um, there's no seed sale, no private sale, no public sale. There was a whale cap, um, no exchange uh, validators, centralized exchanges um, were considered for the airdrop. Purely, purely community driven. The core team um, holds 2.7% of the Genesis supply, which is vested for 12 years. So that's pretty, pretty low. And as I said, um, the core developers are pretty much known in the Cosmos ecosystem, right? So um, yeah, um, absolute legends in the space. Um, they also held a target Cosmoverse in the Lisbon conference. They're always around at events. Um, I just met Jake here in Denver. Um, and um, yeah, they're, they're just super active in the space. And if we look at DEX liquidity, we can also see that on Osmosis, which is the most um, successful AMM and DEX within the Cosmos ecosystem, Juno is the fifth largest liquid asset within that ecosystem, right? $9 million of trading volume in the past 24 hours, um, $55 million in liquidity um, over there. Um, and yeah, you can also see a chart here, by the way, if you want. Price is pretty stable while everything else has been going down a lot. Um, Juno has held really strong. 
just behind Luna, UST, Atom, and Osmo. All right, so here's some of the things that you can do if you're a Juno holder, right? Number one, what you can do, you can provide liquidity on, for example, Osmosis, because there's currently still high APRs, 76% in the Juno Osmo pool and 60% in the Juno and Atom pool. But that's not all because there are bonus bonding rewards, right? So um, actually a lot of Juno, 400, uh, almost 500,000 Juno will be given out over the next 50 days to um, people that bond for at least 14 days. So I don't know in percentage how much it is, but it adds a lot to those 76%, probably at a, above 100%, I guess, way above 100%. Um, if you choose the 14 day unbonding pool. Another thing that you can do, you can stake your Juno if you click on um, staking either in your browser extension or directly on Kepler, um, uh, on the website of Kepler. So um, yeah, I'm also running a validator with Stake Cito. So you can delegate to us. We're currently ranked 16 and have a commission of 5%. Um, like everyone has, I think there's also... Um, that's also the minimum on-chain minimum decided by the Juno community. Um, however, you can also delegate to other nodes, right? SG1 is obviously the godfather of, of Juno. Pubmas because they're doing an airdrop. Figment is doing a lot. King Nodes is doing a lot in the ecosystem. Cephalopod, right? Imperator is doing a lot. Smart Nodes, um, great, great validators. Chorus One, Demi is doing a lot. Chandra Station, they also pr probably do an airdrop, right? So you can also refine a little bit of which validator you're delegating to, um, to potentially get an airdrop. And also one of the latest that just joined from my friends um, at DeFi Times is the Friends Validator, and they also do an airdrop. I'm not sure if it's for Osmos stakers only or also for Juno stakers, but Friends is also up in the rankings now. And there's a total of 125 validators currently securing and decentralizing the Juno chain. So that's really cool and a great, great, great start um, for this ecosystem, right? And if you see there is no um, centralized exchange, no Kraken, no Binance, no Coinbase, this is pretty much many, many, many community run uh, validators, right? Which is also why Stakesito is so high up there. Now, another statistic that I think is really important is mapofzones.com because it tells you the IBC transfers and traffic. And what it tells you if you go on the 30 day um, average, we can see that Juno is actually third, right? In IBC traffic almost a million monthly IBC transfers, which is a lot, right? I have 63 channels to other chains in the ecosystem and almost 100,000 monthly active users, right? 85,000, which is a lot. There's almost as many as crypto.org, right? And crypto.org is absolutely huge. Um, 17th largest cryptocurrency under the sun. So Juno has very strong on-chain stats, great emission schedule, amazing token utility, in my opinion, one of the best coins in Cosmos. It also serves as the base layer for so many airdrops in the ecosystem. So that said, let's look into some comparisons. How cheap Juno would be, for example, if um, um, if Ethereum had devaluation of Juno, right? So let's look at um, at it into this way. Um, and if you um, imagine you could have bought ETH at ten dollars or eleven dollars, right? Because that's in relation to the amount of coins that exist, um, how Juno would be evaluated, right? Um, so buying Juno at $30 equals buying Ethereum at $11. You can do with, with that information, whatever you want. Um, if we look at maybe another smart contract platform that maybe doesn't even really have smart contracts, but is still um, up there, it's like buying ADA at four cents, right? And in my opinion, Juno has a much, much better base layer in terms of community, in terms of technology in terms of adoption already because it's accelerating so fast from the community, which is something that I love. Much more DEX liquidity. Um, it's all coming. It's all exploding as we speak right now. So do with this information whatever you want. Um, if we turn this around, Juno, Juno would be at, well, that's a bad number, but almost $700 if it had a market cap of ADA at $0.91. Cents. Um, if we compare it at Ethereum currently being almost 50% below all-time high, Juno would be at $7,000 per coin, which is crazy, right? Because it currently has only a market cap of 1.2 billion. So anyways, this is my quick review of Juno. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and be good.